Hey, right here in Mass listeners, thanks for joining in for this week's episode with Laurel Siegel. Laurel is the queer business owner of the Siegel Nest, where she supports expecting new and seasoned parents as they evolve into well-equipped, confident parents. She lives in the Boston area with her wife, their infant son, and her teenage twin stepdaughters. Laurel, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Please share with our listeners your story of starting your business and what led you to this point. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, So I've been caring for kids since I was really young, like 10. And I always had a passion for safety and development and just learning child development in general. And I've always gravitated towards working with young children. And I've been a nanny for over 12 years, a professional nanny for over 12 years. And over time, it's just evolved into where I am now. I always said I wanted to take a postpartum doula training, but never had the opportunity. Time, timing was never right. And then I decided timing is never going to be right. So I took a postpartum doula training about four years ago. And since then, I've kind of snowballed into where I am now. Awesome. And I love that you said, and I'm going to highlight this for our listeners, timing is never going to be right, because that's one of the things that I always think about and always talk about is that we're always going to be able to come up with some type of excuse that stops us from launching our business. So because of that, we might as well just do it anyway. Well, actually, speaking of that, my, I was telling my wife for a really long time, I want to take a pediatric sleep consulting course. And one day I was like, you know what? Timing is never going to be right. We're never going to have enough money. So I signed up and then told her after. And she was so supportive, thank goodness, because she could have been mad. Um, And she was really excited that I finally decided to do it because it's something I've been, I had been considering for a really long time. And it opened up doors in the way that I was able to start my business, but it also, I was able to pursue dreams that I've had for years and finally it was coming to fruition. Yeah, which is an amazing feeling. And one question that I wanna ask you that relates to that is that you had mentioned that you were a professional nanny for 12 years, which led you to then wanting to become a postpartum doula and then also go into pediatric Uh, sleep consulting. So did those two passions stem from what you saw with the families that you worked with? Or was it something else that kind of ignited that passion in you and wanting to pursue it further? I have always been a helper. I've always been the caring personality, the helper personality, and just learning about the postpartum period and seeing all of these new parents and how challenging it is has was just something that I really wanted to pursue. So I don't think I, at the time when I took the training, I actually knew what it was going to entail. And I don't think I actually understood the postpartum, postpartum period until my son was born. Mm. And I thought I did, but it's like no other. And everyone says, once you have a child, life changes and you'll never know what it's like until you have a child. And I was like, I have raised so many kids. I'm going to be fine. Like, I'm not going to have any issues. It's going to be perfect. Like, I'm going to know exactly what I'm doing. And I was, I was wrong. Um, I mean, I knew what I was doing, but the emotional piece comes into it. And you don't think like with work, I just, this is, it's emotional, but it's different because those aren't my children. So, and you fall in love with these kids that you help raise and you fall in love with these parents that you help support. But at the end of the day, they're not your children. They're not your parents. They're not your family. So it's a completely different feeling. Yeah, absolutely. And as you were starting to grow your business, that's one of the things that people struggle with most being a location-based business, since you do both in-person and virtual stuff, is just being able to attract people who are within a certain geographic sphere. So being able to build a virtual business 
almost seems easier, even though building a business in general is hard. It almost seems easier because you have more opportunities and more people to work with. But what was one of the things or even a few things that helped you to reach those local families and be able to support them as they grow into their confidence as parents? So I am still a relatively new business and I'm still growing. Um, I have been in business since last July and I so almost a year. It's exciting. Yeah, almost a year. Um, I tend to do mostly remote still, mm -hmm. and I've worked with m many local people, but as far away as Singapore. And wow. yeah, I had a client in Singapore that was a 13 hour time difference. And that was challenging, <laughs> but, um, it's just getting your name out there. I, it's actually something I'm still struggling with because yeah. there's a lot of, I know there's enough clientele out there and there are a lot of sleep consultants that do both remote and um, in person, but they're more well-known than me right now. So mm -hmm. I am still trying to get my name out there and hoping for the best always a learning experience for sure. I mean, even someone who might be five years, 10 years, 15 years in business, there's always new opportunities to pursue and be able to find the methods that work for you, your business and the audience that you're looking to reach. Definitely. And one thing that I found really interesting about you, Laurel, that I didn't mention in your bio because I really wanted to like extract it further for one of these questions is your proficiency in American Sign Language and how you've been able to use that to work with people of various abilities and all abilities. Um, and that's something that's really important to me as I work with one of my favorite clients is a nonprofit that supports uh, youth with, it, with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And so providing accessibility to all is important in a rate that everyone should have. And so I was excited when you mentioned that in your bio. And so I'd love if you could talk a little bit more about that, about perhaps an experience that encouraged you to pursue that and how it's helped your business and be able to provide these opportunities for people of all backgrounds and all abilities. Sure. Um, so growing up, my mom was a pediatric home care nurse and we were in a situation where she was able to bring me to work sometimes and her clients were terminal and they were extremely severe and they were non-ambulatory, non-speaking. They were generally on G-tubes and trachs and um, just very sick. And these kids were they were my friends. They were people that I grew up with. They were around my age and having experienced these amazing people that I got to hang out with, even though we weren't necessarily able to speak to each other, but we were able to connect. That really made me fall in love with people with disabilities and all abilities. Mm -hmm. And from there, it just really I feel like that was the reason, a big reason why I am who I am, because I think I got the, the caring bone from my mom and I love hanging out and being with people that have various disabilities, but specifically people that are non-ambulatory, unable to communicate, unless they have a communication device, mm. um, non-speaking, et cetera. And it really just opened up a world of, I don't even know, a, just a different world to me. And yeah. from there, I ended up majoring in deaf studies in college. Excuse me, I needed a language and I was, I really struggled academically as a child and I needed a language in college and I didn't know what to do. There were spoken languages or there was this visual language, American Sign Language. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I don't think I'm going to be good at taking a spoken language. So I took the visual language and I excelled. I mean, it was really hard, but it was something I absolutely fell in love with. And throughout the process, I did some volunteer work with folks that are deafblind. Mm. And those were my people. 
Yeah. One of my mom's former clients, she's actually still alive and she's in her thirties. She, her mom is an absolute saint. She's, she believed in her child and she believed that her child could do anything. And this young woman whom I got to work with, when she gave me my sign name, my very first sign name, it's changed since then. And she, she helped me in more ways than she'll ever know to find out who I am. And from working with, or not even, I didn't work with her from knowing this young lady, I ended up making the goal to work at Perkins School for the Blind in the deaf blind program. And I did, I worked there for two years or a year and a half. And it was an amazing experience. And then I worked at other various group homes and other various schools. And I've worked with so many different people and got to experience so much. And it was really lovely. And then my ex-girlfriend is deaf. And so I basically became fluent again, working, just being with her. Mm -hmm. And I dated her before I met my wife. So since I, I basically lost the sign again, but it will come back. However, having the opportunity to sign with folks and to understand more than a lot of other folks, uh, I'm not saying deafness is a disability, that's separate, but like Mm -hmm. just being in a clump, working with different abilities in general has given me the opportunity so that if I do have a client with disabilities or parents with disabilities or that are blind or deaf or anything like I feel like I have the tools to work with them and hang and see see them as people right yeah absolutely and that's something that I imagine will make uh current clients if you are working with anyone who might have a disability or future clients who might have that disability and are looking for someone who understands and can support them I mean that's something that will just automatically set you apart from other people in your industry because they know that you'd be the perfect fit given your proficiency and your expertise in that, which I think is amazing. Yeah, I hope so. I also am a child passenger safety technician. I do car seat inspections and car seat checks and car seat education. And on my certification website, I talk about how I sign because if I have parents that are deaf I can communicate with them and teach them how to install their car seats I haven't had that experience yet but I can't wait until it does happen so that I can give them what they need in their language yes and give them a sense of relief knowing that they have someone on their side who can help guide them throughout that process that's my hope In addition to the Seagull Nest, what are some Massachusetts-based organizations that you like to recommend to parents as they're new and kind of settling into this new role, which could be nonprofit-based or even just any of your partners that you like to recommend that these parents can really take and work with and just use what they have to offer? So my wife is also a doula. And yeah, she... Her name is Heather Siegel. She owns Chasing Rainbows Doula Services, and she's a full spectrum doula. She does it all. And she's also delving into the idea of teaching cloth diapering classes. Mm. And because we cloth diaper our son. And um, she also does fertility and um, abortion support and postpartum and birth. So she has it all. And then um, my happy newborn, that's a lovely friend of mine. She, Denise Melvin, she owns an agency. It's a doula agency, but she also does, she's a master newborn care specialist. And for anyone who doesn't know what that is, a newborn care specialist is someone who has expertise in newborns beyond your typical training. She has taken excessive amounts of training and very in-depth training on newborns. And she's also a lactation, a certified lactation consultant. So, and then um, 
Kira Kim, Boston Area Lactation Consultation, I believe. She's absolutely amazing and really beneficial. She's probably the most supportive internationally board certified lactation consultant that I've met ever. And she was a lifesaver to my wife and I when our son was trying to breastfeed and was struggling. Mm. And everything that I, everyone that I know is really baby based, but also um, the diaper lab, which is a cloth diapering company located in Somerville. They are really amazing. And everybody who cloth diapers knows that company, that business. Awesome. So you have like a breadth of people in your network that you can just refer anytime someone needs something. <laughs> and also there's a pediatric, um, pediatric and prenatal and postpartum chiropractor, grasshopper chiropractics in um, Woburn. She's April. I don't remember her last name. It's something Polish sounding. Um, and she only sees babies and folks that are pregnant and postpartum mm -hmm. and she's really amazing oh awesome so that's like if one of your clients comes to you and they're like we need support with a b and c it's really valuable for you to say i have just the right person or organization who can help you through this as i'm working with you or alongside you yeah referrals are really important in my industry because everybody needs something different right and having Having those people at my fingertips is really necessary because somebody might need body work or chiropractics because their child has a tongue or lip tie, but it doesn't necessarily need to be corrected yet. Mm -hmm. Or somebody might need overnight support or just some basic breastfeeding or chest feeding support. And it's really important. And also like, obviously people have different personalities. So not everyone is going to fit a specific referral. So exactly. having a bunch of different referrals is really beneficial so that if I see a personality that I don't think will fit with somebody, referring them to somebody else is beneficial. Absolutely. And speaking of referrals, I would love if you could shout out any of your favorite Massachusetts-based uh, businesses beyond what you've shared. And it can be anything from your favorite local ice cream shop to a clothing store to anything and everything in between. So my family has really been on a kick with um, Cal's Creamery in Reading. It's an ice cream shop and it's really delicious. And they apparently have pizza too. Um, Ooh, good combo. And <laughs> yeah, they just start, I think it's brick oven pizza. And Yum. their ice cream is homemade and it's in really yummy flavors. Um, also, Anna Kalisa in... Um, where is she? In Burlington. She's a small boutique who she teaches lots of classes and she sews a lot of different clothes. Her name is Den. Um, I partner with Den and Den is really an amazing woman. And she she's really supportive of women in general. Actually, mm. she might be someone that would be good for you to talk to. Um, but she her clothing is so cute. And it goes from newborn to, I think, adult. And wow, awesome. Yeah, it's, and her prices are absolutely incredible. She needs to raise them. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and let me think if there's anybody else. Um, I can't remember her. Amanda Holmes, she is a, I don't remember the name of her business, but she's a pelvic floor therapist out of either Burlington or Chelmsford. And she's been a huge support to me. And she's really beneficial for people that need pelvic floor support. Yeah, that's awesome. And what has been your favorite part about owning a business in Massachusetts, specifically Malden, if that has kind of been different being in the area you're located in? Well, I don't know what's been different or what's stood out. Um, I mean, my wife knows everybody. She grew up here. 
she grew up in the apartment building next to us. Oh, wow. um, yeah, my in-laws live next to us. And um, so it's nice because Heather, my wife can, she see, she, I basically compare her to the mayor of Malden. <laughs> she sees anyone and she, she goes to the grocery store and she's there for three hours because she ran into five people she went to high school with. Um, and so it's been really beneficial because she can name drop me and talk yes. to people and like she's an important person in Malden everybody knows her and she's worked in the school system for 18 years oh good so kids that she had in preschool are now graduating high school or have graduated high school so and eventually those people are going to be having children so right. being married to someone who knows everybody has been great she's a town <laughs> Yep. And, and for our listeners, before Laurel and I started recording, we were just talking about townies and how my dad is one. But it's true. I mean, like, it's that's a common thing that I noticed in Massachusetts. I don't know if it's just Massachusetts specifically or it happens across the country, but I've noticed that in a lot of small towns, people like tend to stay where they grew up. And so it really helps to foster those relationships. And like you said, pays off for you because knowing so many people or having access to so many people, it helps with building that clientele. Yes. I have moved 21 times over my, Oh my goodness. Over 14 years. And I've been in this apartment since for three years, we just passed our, no, we're, we're about to pass our three-year anniversary um, of living in, of me living here. And to be in a town where people grew up here and have never left just blows my mind. I, whenever we go somewhere and I'm like, oh, you grew up here? They're like, yeah. And our, I think everybody in our neighborhood basically has grown up here. All the young people, like parents mm. set up camp when they were young and then they had their families here. So it's, and Heather has grown up with all of these people. So it's really interesting, but it, I don't understand it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> is there any advice that you would give to someone who is looking to start a business in the same industry as yours, working with infants and parents um, in Massachusetts specifically? Is there something that you've learned along the way in the past almost year since you've started the Seagull Nest that you think could really benefit our listeners who might be looking to go down this path? Make local connections and mm. stay at it. I have met so many amazing business owners and independent contractors and parents that are local to Massachusetts and having professional relationships has really been beneficial because that's how you get your name out there. Right. And being a new business owner is really daunting, but it's also, I see, I don't quite see the light at the end of the tunnel yet, but I'm hoping I will soon. Um, but just stay with it and get to know everybody. Absolutely. Because the people who are in your network, you're then added into their network. So you'll end up getting referrals from referrals, which is awesome. And it's that free word of mouth marketing that just keeps growing. Yes. I have two more businesses within my industry that I just thought of. If oh, feel free to share. So Boston area doulas, um, Kathleen Stern, she is lovely. And my wife works with her. She Heather's on her team. Kathleen and I have partnered and I'm teaching classes with her company and also um, New World Doulas located in the Duxbury area. They, so the South Shore mm -hmm. and they serve, they do birth and postpartum, but they serve the South Shore in Boston. So that can be beneficial to a lot of your listeners if they're local, super right. local like South Shore local. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And one of the things that it made me think of when you're sharing these recommendations is that it seems like a lot of these partners and, re and referrals that you have are in kind of different areas throughout the state, which is nice. So that way, if someone wants that in-person support for an area that you don't necessarily service or any of your um, other partners who are doing a lot of in-person stuff would necessarily service, you have someone who's in that area that you can send their way. 
I have people on the South Shore, the North Shore, the Boston area. I have someone in Haverhill, Lemons and Labor, um, Marissa Hathaway. And um, I have folks all over and through, there's a group on Facebook called Boston. No, it's not. It's called Doulas of Massachusetts. And it has really opened my eyes up to who's out there and given me the connections to network with people all over the state. Yeah, absolutely. Laurel, this has been such an awesome conversation that I know our listeners will really enjoy listening to as much as I enjoyed recording it. And so now I'd love if you could share with our audience where they can find you online, if they would like to connect with you further or ask any questions about what you do. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, my website is www.thesegalnest.com, seagull like the bird. I also on Facebook, the Seagull Nest LLC. And I also teach classes. I didn't really go into that, but if you are, or if any of the listeners are interested in newborn care classes, pediatric sleep classes, sleep safety, car seat education and safety, I do teach all of those classes, both remotely and in person. I have some coming up in Swamp Scott and that might continue depending on how many people come. So just, and my email is laurel at thesegalnest.com. And I really appreciate you having me on, Ashley. Absolutely. And I will make sure to include the links for our listeners in this episode in the show notes. So that way, in case anyone missed that, they can easily click through and follow you there. But thank you so much, Laurel. Thank you.